From the equator to the Arctic, the world seems to be changing. The first to suffer are the animals. The melting ice is changing their natural habitats forever. But the poles are only one example. They're scarcely a part of our planet not showing signs of climate change. In the furthest corners of the world, scientists are frantically examining the effects of climate change on the Earth and its inhabitants. For this purpose, they're assembling huge amounts of field data, including from outer space. But this data alone is not enough to be able to evaluate the influences on the future of the world's climate. Only a detailed assessment with the help of computer-based climate models can make that possible. Unthinkable without a supercomputer. And that is precisely the task of the German Climate Computing Center in Hamburg, or DKRZ. The center's high-performance computers and software have long enabled German researchers to score great successes in simulating the Earth's climate. We want to know how the climate's going to develop in future, and so we need to represent how the various processes in the atmosphere, in the sea, on land, in the ice, etc., will progress and interact with each other. And for that, we need the most powerful computer available. The DKRZ was founded as long ago as 1987 with the aim of researching how the Earth's climate will develop in future and what the consequences for the environment will be. Although the computing power available back then was only a fraction of what it is now, the achievements of the DKRZ and its users were already respected all over the world. Large-scale climate variations like El Niño in 1997, for example, could be predicted and visualized in Hamburg. Small-scale events like a volcanic eruption and its global effects could also be simulated. Continuous development of the models and a steady increase in computer performance enabled the DKRZ to make considerable contributions to the IPCC reports, hitherto the most significant studies on global warming. In 2007, that organization was even awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, along with former United States Vice President Al Gore. Today, it's no longer a matter of if climate change is coming, but how it manifests itself, where, and to what extent it's changing our environment, economy, and society. In order to meet this challenge, ever more computer power is required. The politicians see things the same way. The German Ministry of Science is financing the installation of a brand new supercomputer for the DKRZ and the city of Hamburg new state-of-the-art premises. The facilities occupy several stories of the new building. While the supercomputer is being built on the fourth, one floor below is the home of the new data archive. Here, the computed data is stored on magnetic tapes with a total capacity of more than 60,000 terabytes. Computer systems like these generate huge amounts of heat and need extensive cooling equipment. The DKRZ's new scientific and technical director, Professor Thomas Ludwig, is determined to keep energy consumption for climate forecasting as low as possible. The center is powered exclusively by green electricity. Our job is to forecast climate change, not induce it. The new computer, an IBM Power 6 system, outperforms its predecessor by a factor of about 60. Its peak performance of more than 150 trillion calculations per second 
makes it one of the world's most powerful supercomputers in scientific use. The accuracy of climate simulations depends greatly on computing capacity. We can now capture many more processes and much smaller phenomena than we could in the past. Visualization is playing an ever greater role in the evaluation of such comprehensive data. One example is the representation of phenomena in 3D. Here we're dealing with the visualization of climate model data. It is three-dimensional and of course we'd also like to show it in 3D. Virtual reality helps us to better capture spatiality and it gives climate scientists a whole new tool. The significance of climate research is also made clear at the 2009 International Supercomputer Conference. In the spotlight are the DKRZ and its powerful new supercomputer. The special thing about it is that it's exclusively used for climate research. International scientists are also impressed. The KRZ is a really a good example of a very good achievement between science and technology and uh, we are really uh, expecting the new results that will come from uh, this, this new machine. Without a doubt, the DKRZ's computers are world class. Nevertheless, new data needs to be collected constantly to improve the climate models. Dirk Notz's investigations of polar sea ice are one of the many pieces of the jigsaw that will come together to form the big picture. Using an instrument developed by Dirk and his team, he can collect valuable information on the melting of the sea ice. which, along with extensive other data, contributes to the climate models computed at the DKRZ. And it's not only science that is benefiting from the new supercomputer. One new user is the Climate Service Center. Here, in close proximity to the computing center, politicians, decision makers and investors can get advice on how to capitalize on the research results. What we're trying to do is translate and transfer the results of the research in terms of the needs of society. If, for example, a mayor is planning the future of his town or city and needs to know how to take the changing climate into account, he can come to us and we'll try and help. A coherent concept to support scientists and politicians with their remits. But the DKRZ's visions don't stop there. In order to meet the challenges of the future head-on, still more computing capacity will be needed. In particular, today's technology still cannot forecast small-scale phenomena. The computational grid needs to be refined and the computing capacity increased. The new building and the supercomputer are a big step that guarantee the quality of German climate research and contribute to the work being done in the field worldwide. It certainly isn't a reason to rest on our laurels.